How are you? Good. Uh, good. Not too bad. Just uh, yeah. uh, we moved in a few, uh, a few, yeah, two months ago now, and and my office is not that yet. So I'm in the let's say in a in a room where we do multiple stuff. So there's nothing set <laughs> with the <laughs> decoration or whatever. But uh, soon, soon. Digging the uh, digging the mustache there in the off season. Oh, no, no. No, no, it's yeah. Well, I, I think I was too lazy to shave. It's not the mustache, but it's just I somehow I don't have enough. Uh, hold on, uh, ask me something. Yeah, uh, I don't have enough there. You know, I'm young still. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No big canards coming off the side. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I'll still need 20 years or something to have a full beard. So, wow. but it's not my goal. It's not my goal. You know, all good. <laughs> I was thinking maybe good luck trying for this year or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I'll say before they turn out a little bit. So, yeah. Um, we are joined today by 24 Hours of Le Mile Winner in GT, 24 Hours of Nurbert Ring, uh, multiple lap records, multiple tracks, um, the fastest hands you're going to see this side of a loose <laughs> F1 car. Um a wonderful father, uh, a husband, and a factory Porsche driver. Welcome, Kevin Estre. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's funny. I've seen you more in the last six months than I did in the prior seven and a half years because I just saw you at Spa. <laughs> um, you know, how's everything been? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, yeah, all good on the on the. On the racing side, uh, last year has been so-so. Let's say performance was okay, but but result was not as the uh, as we wanted, or we didn't achieve right. the goals we wanted. Um, and on the personal side, uh, got a got a daughter. Now I have a son and a daughter. We just built a, a house, uh, which we moved in 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 the winter. So it's all good. Set for for a new life with the hypercar. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 arguably that is probably the top uh you know buzz right now is uh porsche's assault on the new lmdh category um if i throw the the, the calendar back i remember asking you in 2015 you know what's the five-year plan <laughs> and i think you had said uh to make an absolute attempt at or win Le Mans outright in a within LMP car, LMP one. Um and, and and it looks like dreams do come true. Yeah, I didn't manage the five years time frame though. Uh it took me it take me seven, but uh, or eight, but uh but it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take that yeah. for sure. No expiration on dreams, huh? <laughs> no. no um, yeah, but uh, no, really, really glad with uh, that that happened yeah what 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 has it been like and, and let's go back a little bit how soon did you kind of think that you were in the running to be plucked I mean your teammate Michael Christensen the two of you have had a lot of success in the 991 and 992 uh yeah. G or RSR sorry yeah. um People wouldn't know I was a Porsche yeah. guy. Oh, uh, was, oh, was he your teammate as well when you drove LMP2 that one year? Uh, no, no, it was uh, Lawrence Vantois. Oh, okay. Which is ah. funny because he's going to be my teammate this year. So, um, so it's, right. uh, it, it was our first Le Mans, uh, both of them, of us uh, in 2015. And now it's going to mm -hmm. be our first Le Mans together in uh, in LMDH uh, in, in the hypercar class. So it's, uh, it's good. But, uh, no, oh, otherwise, yeah, Michael Christensen was my teammate. Uh, pretty much every race as I've drove between 2018 and and now. So wow. So how soon did you think that you were going to be in the running per se? I think um, when the first discussion came uh, between. FIA, WEC, and IMSA to try to merge some regulation to be able to to be able to uh, to have a a car uh, which can do both championship and everything. Uh, there uh, at that time, the head of or kind of the 
our spoken person at Porsche Motorsport was a, a French guy, Pascal Zurlinden, which is not there anymore. Uh, and he was in charge of all of all these discussion and everything. And and at that time, we could speak with him very very openly. And and uh, mm. and they already, my both Michael and myself, I remember it was probably Spa uh, WC in 2019, uh, where he told us, you know, it's going good. I think something is going to happen. Blah blah blah. And we thought we looked at each other and thought, ah, if he tells us this, then it means that he think of us, you know, to to put us there. So this was the first, I think, sign. Um, and then I think having the trust and uh, the faith uh, that that if I do well in GT uh, with Porsche, if I if I do good results, if I if I behave well and everything, that I should have my chance. Uh, this I always had the the trust in this because that's how Porsche worked the last uh, 20, 30 years. Um, yep. And finally, yeah, it did happen. Um, I, I was quite confident with the last three, four seasons I made with Porsche that I I would get a chance at least to test the car and and uh, and to be able to to show what I can um, to know if I would get the right. This is another thing, but at first the most important is to to be able to to test and and uh, and show what you can. Did and the that, end, they took I mean, me without testing. They, they took me without ah. testing, so so it was good. <laughs> that's, that's mega. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's all there's always a certain amount of underlying aligning um, pressure being a factory driver. I mean, results, 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 qualify that one lap window of qualifying. But once you knew that, once you had spoken to that gentleman, the French guy per se, uh, in 2019, and you kind of felt that way, did that put any added pressure to continue with the results any more than the already? No, I, I don't think so because I, I felt, uh, f- let's say, to so- for my first year at Porsche, two thousand sixteen, was a tough year mentally because I, I made some mistakes. We were not there in Le Mans, or we we had a bad performance on some races, etc. And two thousand seventeen was for me a good performance year, but without good results. And eighteen was performance and result. And since mm-hmm. two thousand eighteen, somehow I, I think I performed well every year. And so my okay. my confidence was was quite high. Um, still made mistakes and and uh, and for sure I could be faster at some 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 stage and then everything. Uh, nobody's perfect, but I I felt I felt good, and I didn't feel more pressure because I knew I I felt so well in this RSR project and also in the in the GT three R in the races I I've done on the Nurburgring in Spa that yes. I knew you know I, if I continue doing this if I don't don't do huge mistakes or or really uh, disappoint people. Then I, I I should be in, you know. And and this is the way I felt. And I didn't add pressure because the pressure I had was to perform in the RSR anyway, or to perform every race I do. And uh, and I didn't need a an extra performance, you know, for uh, to get to LMDH. I think. In music, the bass player and the drummer are very very connected, right? That's what we hear in a live concert. That's what makes us really get into it. On the racetrack, it's like driver and engineer. How critical has that relationship been with your engineers at Porsche on getting that one lap quality uh, window with what people say the Michelin's being a, a kind of a peaky tire for qualifying, if, if, if I'm yeah. right? Um, what what what's that relationship like between your engineer and yourself? Uh, it's the uh, you can be the best driver in the world if if you don't understand if your communication with the engineer if you if your engineer doesn't understand your need you will not you will not do the pole you know because we are in mm-hmm. such competitive championship that if you're missing two three tenths you're not doing the pole and if the car is not perfect mm-hmm. you miss two three tenths on one lap. Uh, so this is for sure very very important, and and the routine and the experience you have with your engineer makes for me the biggest difference. Um, in last year, in two thousand twenty one, I've done all the qualifying in WEC uh, with the RSR, and uh, I've done all the pole apart from Le Mans where I crashed. Um, <laughs> uh, and and there there I felt it because. Because I had the routine of the qualifying, I knew exactly what I need to warm the tire up uh, and and what balance I need 
with all tires to when you put the new tire, you always have a bit of a balance shift. What do mm-hmm. I need there? We did a quali sim and I knew, okay, you know, what what do I have to do in the quali sim to uh, to get a good car? If the car is not great in the quali sim, then what do we need to change? And the communication with your engineer and, and the fact that when you tell the engineer, I have a little too much oversteer in turn three on entry, he knows a little too much oversteer is one click of, of uh, sway bar or, or it is mm-hmm. it is camber, is it three clicks? You know, it depends how, how you speak. And this you get with the experience you have with your engineer together, uh, working together. And, and this we were, I believe, very, very strong in WC because we... We worked together since 2017, so um, ah, okay. so and and it this makes a difference for sure. Yeah. So I mean, on top of the team dynamics, with along with the engineer, I mean, you have two other drivers that you're sharing a car with, right? Like, how how do you obviously, Christensen, you've been with him for a while, but how do you guys build and maintain that relationship on and off the track? Uh, yeah, this is this is as important as the engineer. How how you fit with your teammate because you drive, let's say in the WC in GT, you had one teammate for the whole season and a second one for, uh, for Le Mans. You were three in Le Mans, but two for the whole championship. Oh. And, uh, and with Michael, we have quite a similar driving style, not exactly the same, but very similar. And, and we need, we have the same needs in the car. You know, some drivers really like understeer, some drivers hate oversteer or whatever. And for us, we, we like a balanced car and and not too much understeer, but very similar. And uh, and this again is the is the the experience and and the the trust in your teammate when he set up the car. When you do a compromise in in free practice two, for example, uh, I don't drive. Michael drive the whole one and a half hour, and he developed the car for him at that stage. And I have to be fully confident that when I jump in in FP three, that it's gonna be. It's going to be pretty much the race car I will have because we don't have any more practice. And uh, and this trust you build throughout the years. Um, and, and for sure, it's very important then to have a, a teammate which has the same point of view than you, same same idea of motorsports, um, mm-hmm. of what you need to win the races and what you need in the car to be able to be quick. And this we had with Michael. I think that's why that's explained also how success successful we were together and uh, mm-hmm. and with Lawrence Vanto as a third driver in Le Mans was also is also very similar and uh, so this was a uh, I think one one of our strengths and one a bit of luck because when Porsche put us together we didn't know each other well they didn't know really mm-hmm. us, uh, and it worked <clears throat> and and you know you have some some guys in in history like uh, this uh, Lotera, Fasla, uh, Trelugier, which won Le Mans. And, and you, you always hear, well, we had a great, you know, we were working well together and everything worked well. And that's how you, you win these big races. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, you can have two very fast drivers, but if they don't work together and if they don't fit together, you're not going to win endurance races. Yeah. We When we spoke uh, eight years ago, <laughs> uh, I interviewed you. And I was asking you, I think at that time you had just done Le Mans in the LMP2 Oak Racing. Yeah. And, you know, on in, at KPAX, I get to look at everyone's in car, right? And I, I used to talk to you, I used to tell you, like, amazing, <laughs> amazing hands. But you had said that you had to calm down your steering inputs in the LMP car. Tell us about the first time you drove the 964 um in testing like the very first time did had you done sim of the 64 and then drove the actual car and what was it like yeah i I drove one time the sim before i before i jumped into the car um and to be honest i i was the second driver uh within the development time so i drove quite early in the in the process i think was the third day of the car and it mm. was in Vaisa, so in the the home track of Porsche. You know, it's quite yeah. a small track. It was, I think, mid mid January, uh, three degrees centigrade, so so whatever, <laughs> <laughs> cold. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, Thirty five oh. uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and 
and for sure it was not the the time where you push like hell and you you know you go to the mm. limit and everything and and we had a, quite a heavy steering at that stage we made some improvement later so actually you could not have really fast hands you know because it was quite quite tough to see yeah. <laughs> anyway but uh but yeah for sure you have to come into a into a different mode you have to let's say uh forget it about your your instinct driving style which mm. mine is is quite aggressive and quite quick on the hands as you said the turn in and therefore also the correction because you are entering a new car you don't know how it's going to react so you have to think a little more um yeah. anyway you have to think a lot because it's complicated car and and new environment and everything and just trying to to slow down a little on everything um, and especially because it was not a performance test, it was a development test on the home track. You take it everything mm. a little easier and, and slower, you know, and try to to have a little, uh, yeah, a little more feeling and, and try to be a little smoother. So, so I want to go back to, uh, to to your McLaren days. I remember, you know, we were sitting in the office and I was, I, I would be writing invoices and Miles said, you know, you got to come over and check out this in car. I'm like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll come over. <laughs> yeah, at the time, I, you know, I wasn't, you know, wasn't sure of who you were and anything. And he's like, man, just like watching how quick your hands are, your, your reaction speed. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? You know, then overall, you know, throughout the year, you know, I see more in car of this guy. Like, Holy crap. You know, and then obviously the, the, the Coda race in the rain, you know, uh, <laughs> said you, you walked the field on that and you're, I mean, just, every corner you're to the limit you know reaction so quick um 32 second lead yeah <laughs> 32 second lead actually actually probably what stood out to me coda 2015 first race in the rain was with the 32 second lead and i've watched in car all the way through at at the end of the race with that lead you weren't letting on like your lap times at the end were almost like your lap times at the beginning of it, I mean, it was crazy. And what's required for that level of concentration and focus? Um, like, where does that come from? I think it's many things. Um, at first, it's never, you know, you have some some races where you perform, you have an outstanding performance. And this one, one of this one was one of these and uh, where I felt, I felt good. That's what you said with the, I had a lot of lead, but I still drove at the limit because I felt I could handle it. And I felt good. The car was good. And yeah. I had never a surprise, you know, I, I was always in control. Um, and, and this happens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't happen. And, and there you have to be then uh, let's say uh, awake enough or, or smart enough or whatever, <laughs> aware enough to calm down and, and re, you know, uh, remove a few tents because otherwise you're going to crash. This is experience, which, which helps you yeah. to, to, uh, to achieve this. I, I crashed some cars because I was too much on the limit where I, where I should not have been. Uh, and mm -hmm. I hope I'm, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, I for sure made some mistakes and, um, but, but I think I think go kart helps you a lot on that. Starting early, um, you know, I, I started when I was four years old. The first time I sat in in a in a go kart, and and for sure, all these experience you get from four year old until you are thirty four, as I'm now getting older, older uh, helps you <laughs> every lap you do, every lap you do, every different car, every every. Um, different situation helps you or you have to you have to remember it and and you know get it to your mind the mistakes you do um so this is i think this is this is the thing and 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 the instinct of course you have to drive with your instinct especially on the rain i would say because mm -hmm. on the dry you drive with your instinct but also you know exactly where you break this the conditions normally are the same you know when you drive every lap lap by lap just the tire changes a little bit but otherwise everything is the same in the rain you can have two laps with a lot of rain two laps with less you know some aquaplaning some not there you have to drive more with your instinct and uh and my instinct on the rain was always pretty good and and i think i this plus the experience uh makes some some good good races question um last night i looked at i looked at the whole lap of the 
the McLaren 12C <laughs> uh, with door racing from, I think, 2014. Yeah, um, okay. When you went from the McLaren 650 SGT3 to the RSR, what was that jump like in terms of, and, and, and I know I keep saying it, driving style. And I'm only saying that because a lot of our viewers, a lot of our followers are Subaru enthusiasts or, you know, some Miata and, and BRZ and so on and so forth. Um, and our cars just push like crazy. And I remember the 12C being a big understeering car. Um, and that's probably putting it politely. <laughs> um, what was it like going from that to a car that historically has lots of front end turn in and grip? Um, yeah, very different. But but the RSR is a uh, the RSR is an amazing car. It, it's a Porsche. I mean, we I, I started my career with Porsche with the RSR with the rear engine, um, mm -hmm. which I knew from the Cup car. But the RSR is uh, there, and the Cup car is there. You know, there's a huge yeah. huge step. The RSR is is no compromise on the development. There's only only the compromise from the great regulation from homologation, and the rest, you know, you can change kinematic dampers everything mm. and and so you you get pretty much the car the car you want as a driver you know you don't you are not so you are not so limited in in terms of setup and and uh, and car balance so mm. and with my experience from the cup car i have to say i felt really good straight away with the rear engine um uh, and everything in the rsr is is was very natural and pretty easy i have to say because you have confidential tires you have very good tires uh which which have a peak but lasts uh two stints uh you know it, ah. this makes quite a difference uh when when we were speaking about the gt3 the the 650 the mclaren you are driving there mm -hmm. on pirelli customer tire which are tires ah. which should work at quota at the you know four degrees celsius uh, track and uh, Laguna Seca in hot summer <laughs> at 50 degree mm -hmm. track. So they can't be as good as a, as a confidential tire, which has a window of, you know, 15 degree track. And then you have another tire. And this makes quite a big difference on how the car behave yeah. and, and how you can play with the car because the tire always work is always in the window. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I felt good. I have to say going in the RSR straight away. Uh, for sure. I had to, to re, to relearn some stuff, but uh, but my instinct was correct straight away, and I and I could drive without thinking too much, which was I think uh, important. So, because that, that same year, well, shortly between that time frame is when the RSR went the, the forward mid engine, All right? So, did did having experience in the 650s with the mid engine rear wheel drive, mm. did that you know translate any at all going to the new RSR? Yeah, yeah, I think I had because uh, Porsche had a lot of drivers which uh, drove rear engine for the last uh, decades or, or 15 right. years. They haven't driven any mid engine forever. So I mm -hmm. was a, a, a new guy there developing a car, a mid engine, which I've been driven for the last two years in another category, but very similar car in the end. So I, I, I could bring my my experience there, uh, Lawrence Vantor was also there, uh, but he arrived at the end of the development uh, coming from Audi, which also was a mid-engine. So, um, so yeah, I think there, there my experience from McLaren for sure helps uh, during the development and also to, to feel also at home straight away, which my other Porsche colleagues uh, like Richard Leeds, like, uh, like this guy, mm -hmm. you know, which, which drove Porsche since 2006, 2007, only re-engine. <laughs> Um, they never drove any mid engine car, so uh, so this right. was for sure something <laughs> something new for them, and and McLaren helped there, helped me there yeah. for sure. What's uh, what's your favorite U.S. track? My favorite U.S. track, uh, Barber. I really like Barber, uh, and yeah, Sebring probably because of the. Yeah. The challenge but from let's say the the layout and how beautiful the track is i have to say barber uh that that uh that weekend we've done in the pwc with the mclaren was a was a dream for me i really love that yes i mean sebring we i remember what this past year 2022 when you, your pass over the corvette 
on the back straight. I mean, you yeah. you had the ins- you got the run on him, side drafted, took that inside line. And I mean, so it was like, how, again, how much do you guys do in the simulator? Like, I, that's a bumpy track for people who don't know. That you know, used to be our old airport ship, and it is bumpy all the way through. And especially that turn 17, to hold that line and to carry that speed all the way throughout, you know, how, how much prepping goes into the car, especially for, for Sebring? Yeah, Sebring is a Sebring is a is a different is on a different planet. You know, it's not a, it's not a race car <laughs> race car track. It's more of a motocross track. You know, yeah. uh, so it, it's there's a lot of a lot of prep uh, on the sim on the on the rig. You know, on the on the damper rig uh, on the seven post on simulation um, mm. and and experience also from the previous years. Uh, mm-hmm. But for sure, it's, it's a very tough track. It, it's very difficult there to be to have the right the right setup because you uh, you want to be soft for the bump, but you don't want to be too soft to lose some grip because you have a lot of lot of you need a lot of grip there mechanical wise. Right. But if you're too soft, you're gonna lose a lot of grip. You're gonna gain some ride, help some ride, but then lose the grip. And this is the compromise you have to to take. And there are let's say, uh, different philosophy of setup. Um, and there you always have to choose one to start the weekend and, and try to keep it and try to improve bit by bit. Um, but it's a, it's a very tough track for the engineers and, and for the drivers, for sure. Question. Um, when you are behind a car that you have caught, and you know most people know that catching a car is one thing, but passing it's another thing. But when you're behind that car that you want to pass, h- how do you maintain uh, control of your emotions and, and and not trying to pass too soon since you probably have to back off a little bit, but then you have, you have a window that you can get it done? Um, for me... My my father always always taught me since I'm since I'm a kid in go kart. When you're behind, when you arrive to somebody, don't spend too much time. If you spend too much time, mm. he's gonna know where you're fast, where you're not, and you're never gonna over- overtake him. And when you go, go. You know, don't don't hesitate because this is where you crash. And this is mm. what I learned very early in my in my career, and I and I think I apply this every time I I come to to a car it's let's say my instinct now and and i don't have to think about too much i try to to recognize my strengths and his weakness very early in the process let's say within as soon as i can see him and i'm let's say within two seconds i i, I know where i'm strong where he's not and and trying to build up the the past in this in this phase already when i'm catching him before i'm uh, before i'm actually really behind him getting in in a position mm-hmm. to pass and um and that's how i how i do it and uh, and there you have to try to find the right moments depending on the race situation the championship situation how much risk you can take yeah. uh, mm-hmm. sometimes you have to you have to take more risk and go like this and go for it and and think that okay, <laughs> you know something bad can happen and sometimes yeah. you know you have time you just have to wait and and try to see uh, it's never the same situation. Every race, every every pass is different. But but this is the let's say my my strategy and the way I I treat passes is, mm-hmm. is to try to prepare as early as possible. Um, do you miss the standing start uh, races in the states? I miss the standing start. I'm not sure because the McLaren suck. <laughs> 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 but but the the sprint the sprint racing in the state I miss for sure because I yeah. I really like I really like this uh, this format of of giving it all for one hour or forty five minutes mm-hmm. or whatever and and try to yeah to use the tires you have for that hour and and uh, yeah get the risk you know there you have a, a high risk reward quote you know if you uh, mm-hmm. you have to take risk to win a race like this. And if you if you take too much risk, you do a mistake. Then is one sprint race from, uh, you know, whatever fifteen races, and not just one endurance race from six. Uh, and you're alone on the car and everything. So I, it's something for sure. I I liked and uh, and maybe in the future, uh, I don't know, I could do again. <laughs> do you have a like one thing I always pay attention to? these these 12 13 years working for race team is 
I watch how drivers get in a zone before they go out, whether it's before the race, but particularly qualifying, right? Because it's just such, it's so intense. And I, I remember you seemed pretty relaxed, like you, like you were very relaxed. But once the door came down or once your helmet was on, you, <laughs> they, like that was impenetrable. Like you, you, were, you were somewhere else. Where do, where do you go prior to that? in your head in terms of the zone um this is for me as you said I'm, I'm relaxed before i jump in the car but i always try to be 10 minutes in the car before the session really starts a qualifying especially um and there i there i try to do the lap in my in my mind you know think about what i've seen on the videos think about what i've seen on the data where can i improve what's in very important in this corner um, what's the breaking point in this corner? Um, uh, you know, what do I have to take care, especially for qualifying compared to the speed we had in, in practices? Um, and this is what I do really. Normally I close my eyes, think about the turn one, turn two, turn three. What do I have to do in this corner? Um, yeah. uh, try to for sure, make sure I have all the setting correct on my steering wheel and, uh, and then off we go. Kevin, it, it it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. Like I really mean that. Yeah, um, this is me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm watching you know since McLaren days, watching in car, and ever since you know now all the Porsche stuff, and now finally getting to talk to you one on one. It's it, it's a dream, you know. Like for us, you know, you're an idol for us. Like some people have movie stars, you know, for us race hard guys. It's it's you. It you is know, you. you know? Thank yeah. you. And, and, and thank you so and, much. And we're not just we're not just saying yeah. that because you're here. Like I'm not gonna say that to the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, no, I will listen to make sure I will listen to yeah, yeah. Um, so, so well, when, when can people expect to see your first outing in, in the new 963 uh, it's going to be Sebring uh, Sebring 12 hours in March oh. so uh, oh, Sebring 12 hours not sorry Sebring 8 hours in the WEC uh, during the Sebring okay. 12 hours weekend so it's going to be on Friday before the before the 12 hours so middle of March in Sebring first race of the WEC and uh, hopefully a win for our Porsche. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Is uh, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, social media, you know, you know people, Kevin Estra, you know where to find you. All good. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah, just write Kevin Estra on, on social media. Normally you should find me and um, yeah, give a follow and uh, and uh, give a follow to Rice Comp Engineering and KW, which, <laughs> are, which are doing pretty good, pretty good dampers because that's what we have on the Notch Life and, and we win quite a lot of races there, so. So it's funny you say that. Like, we definitely should do a plug for KWC. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, they, you know, it's, people say to me, "Why should I buy your shocks over other brands?" And and and, and this is a good plug. No, and 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 I tell them, well, KW makes the shocks that are on the Cayman Cup, nine eleven Cup, uh, RSR. You know, um, and that speaks volumes. But uh, but thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Tell Carolyn I said hi. I've not met Tommy yet or Bella. Um, but I hope to in the soon. I'm sure I'll see you at Spa 24. Yeah, actually, yeah, no, let's see. wait, let's see. GT, yeah, let's see. So, let's see, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, but thank you very much. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Cheers. All right, take yeah. care.